June 19th, 2022, direct from the cradle of mankind. This is Too Much Information with Ty Gashira. Well, hello and welcome to the penultimate episode of season one of TMI, the show where you don't need a degree to feel at home. <laughs> karibu Sakaja, sorry, Karibu Sana. <laughs> My name is Tai Gashira. <laughs> On the show tonight, bills, bills, bills of the 12th parliament with Mamito Yune. <laughs> We also take a look at the borrowing game with the debt evader himself, Eric Lusavali. Yeah. Guys, guys, on the TMI interview, stand-up comedian, radio host, podcaster, and MC, Emmanuel Kisiangali. Yeah. Come out of your body, please. Two more nine shillings for these social media handles to fix your mafuta, okay? I'm dressed up. I hope you are now. Now, let's go. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's, it's been a strange week. The police have been quite busy. Suspects from the infamous Rongai robbery, remember them? They were eventually caught after they attempted to withdraw 240,000 shillings from an Mpesa agent. Can you imagine how that went, eh? In a way, they withdrew to 40,000. I mean, which Mpesa lady lets you withdraw to 40,000? I, mean, I mean, it turns out the Mpesa lady was a man, so. <laughs> Uh, Buddha, Buddha bina elewa. Toa tu, uh, na izaktolea hata kwa jirani, you know? Now, also, police seized 15 million worth of bang on the Malaba Eldoret Highway. It seems they intercepted Wajakoya's manifesto. <laughs> <laughs> the launch will delay, guys. The launch will delay. Now, beyond our borders, Uganda's long-lasting president, Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, has blamed past regimes for the poverty and problems his country is facing. <laughs> Ugandans were shocked to find out they indeed have had past regimes. <laughs> <laughs> and now to a story that has Kenyans going to the North Pole or swimming across the dangerous Migingo waters just to acquire one document, a degree. <laughs> and even then... <laughs> uh, notice that you don't have a degree certificate. Uh, it's like trying to fool your uncle with a fake Mpesa message, you know? <laughs> Uncle, I send you 2K when you need 200 bob. And Chebukati eventually noticed. And that's why Nyambane was in one day and out the next. I revoked a nomination certificate of Walter Onjoka Mungare of Mocha Summit Party dated 2nd June 2022. Oh, Mungare, fake moi, fake degree. <laughs> anyway, the degree requirement notwithstanding, there is something very brazen. Kenyan about someone just running a full campaign knowing full well they don't have a degree certificate. You know, what we are seeing is Kwani Bosi Konini energy, yeah? <laughs> but, but not everyone is a fool in this degree matters. The truth is that my Tito has his certificates. I am a graduate 30 years ago. That is when I took off to India for, for education. <laughs> Yes, that, that's a genuinely innocent case. I mean, uh, because there are only three reasons to go to India. Education, healthcare, and to tell people you sat in a plane. <laughs> now, you know, I'm thinking the confusion could have come from the fact that they spelled certificates as certificates. <laughs> My Tito has his certificates. <laughs> but I mean, who doesn't have weaknesses? I mean, others haven't even graduated or even gone to India. Provision is that you must have a degree and give us a copy. Uh, I noticed that you you have attached the transcripts. You'll be graduating sometimes in December. December of 2022. And yeah, Wanjigi Simbaba. Wanjigi is youth. He hasn't even graduated. I mean, it seems the only defense people who have trouble with their papers have is that nobody noticed it last time. That's like saying some telling someone, hey. I broke into your house last year and you didn't scream. Now why are you screaming today? Yeah? <laughs> IBC should change the minimum requirements for running for office to include being a member of at least two alumni associations. That way we can use the peer verification method of ah, who you, who you to look one, eh, who you? <laughs> because all this paperwork business is confusing to everyone. <laughs> now, from trying to get elected to those who are already elected, 
parliament. The 12th parliament has just been adjourned. Nakusema kweli kazi walifanya. There is evidence, Madam Speaker, that money was changing hearts in this house. Will as many as of that opinion say aye? It's interesting how our laws are passed with the same energy of Ikibaba Sana Wapi Duru! Say aye. Anyway, now, joining us to work at Duru is our parliamentary discussion correspondent, Mamito Yune! Mamito, lakini hii parliament siwa limaliza poa. Tai, in life, you are remembered by how you finish. <laughs> and this 12th parliament finished strong by passing the ICT Practitioner Bill 2020. Ndiyo waende nyumbani wafanye TikTok. <laughs> Which was first introduced by Garissa AMP Aiden Dwale in 2016 and reintroduced in 2018 by nominated AMP Godfrey Osotsi seeks to streamline Kenya's tech community through registration of ICT practitioners. Registration tena, kwani ICT IJ kwa streamlined? Tai. Basically, serikali imeingia kati. Itaanzisha ICT training center uende huko ulipe usome ICT kwa sababu kina Bill Gates walienda training ndio waanzishe Google Microsoft Word. Uh, okay, but is that what the bill proposes Mamito? Bill inasema uh -huh. lazima uende class kwanza upate 3 years experience. Uh -huh. Halafu uingie kwa chama wa kuregulate ulipe license ndio uanze kutengeneza website for exposure na kahawa. <laughs> okay, Mamito, I don't understand. To get experience I need to be certified. But to get certified I need experience. What don't you understand? <laughs> Hawa watu wote wa Kilimani moms. Kina Americs. Kina Aziad, kina Kife, kwa Twitter, kwa OnlyFans, kwa Gmail. Hawajasomea. Na wanafanya hizo mambo za ICT. Ni lazima walipe license, wachukue diploma, serikali haiezi lala nja na wewe unaweka filters. <laughs> No, Mamito, this looks like a solution in such a problem. I mean, I mean, what happens when all these young innovators are squeezed out of the market? Who cares? Huh? <laughs> Omba Basi president as he sign. Jua ki sign, how are what water wanafanya photocopy, itabidi watafute diploma. <laughs> Mamito, these guys have passed this bill in an election year. Kwani they don't want to get re-elected? Kuna watu wanaenda nyumbani na wanajua. Wanajijua. <laughs> Please return them. Let us not have 70% of the leaders being chased. Tai. <laughs> Nionge kwa upole. What these guys don't understand is if they pass bills that are right, bills that people care about, hakuna mtu atawachapa? Hawata guzwa na mtu? Eh, sawa mamito, sawa mamito. Ladies and gentlemen, our parliamentary discussion correspondent, Mamito Yule! Next, from parliament bills to parliament buildings. And also, the money games with the debt evader himself, Eric Lusavali. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, welcome back to TMI, the only show that tells you where the money is. <laughs> Now, the Parliamentary Service Commission has announced a price of 100,000 shillings for anyone who can name the newly constructed Parliament building. I mean, it's, uh, the least they could do is just share at least a third of their daily tea budget. Eh? <laughs> now, the PSC has hinted that the name should reflect the role of Parliament in society. So, here at TMI, we had a few suggestions. And just like Parliament, we benchmarked internationally and from India, at a discount, we got uh, <laughs> Taj Imoral. <laughs> um, from Egypt, we decided uh, we go with the Great Pyramid Scheme. <laughs> 
<laughs> and straight from Paris, France, we went with the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Now, because we support local architects, it will be to ground pier. Now, we could have a crimes tower. <laughs> also, we decided something people everyone sees KICC, you doing nothing. <laughs> and because drama is a signature for parliamentarians, uh, KN thieves. Now, come on, talk about Valley, you always know what to look for first Mafia Center. <laughs> And for those of you who are just, I don't know, Safina Joy. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, okay, okay, let me take you back. What about uh, we wait for Matatus at uh, KenCon? <laughs> <laughs> and finally, for our French speakers in Nairobi, Ariens Robari. <laughs> Like it, uh, on a serious note, it's high time creatives are paid commensurate with the work they do. I mean, instead of competitions, do the right thing, pay creatives. So they stop running for parliament and take your jobs, eh? Amanam Nagani Jalas. Speaking of games, fresh from playing hide and seek games with the landlord, cooking oil, flower prices, as well as the IMF, Kenyans this week woke up to the news at a popular TV series featuring various players with varying degrees of debt, vying for cash by playing dangerous games, has been renewed for a second season. Now, who better to tell us what to expect in the new season than our very own debt evader, correspondent and author of Nairobi Times bestseller, Kopadeni Kuleraha. <laughs> Eric Losavali. Thank you very much, Tai. Thank you very much, Tai. Season two promises to be more of a reality show than a sci-fi drama. A new name, and they even got a new sponsor. Introducing the Squeeze Gaze, proudly brought to you by the People's Republic of China. <laughs> and are these cast members from the previous season, Kweli? Well, we have new actors in the game, and some of these guys owe so much money that playing the game and winning the prize is the only way they can pay up. First up, we have player 244 Yoao Lorenko of Angola with a debt of, get this, $79 billion. Now, Ty, you have to feel sorry for this guy. He was tagged into this debt game by his predecessor, Eduardo Dos Santos, whose kleptocracy was so infamous, at one point his daughter Isabella Dos Santos was the wealthiest woman in Africa. Yani, anti wa Boeing 777. <laughs> Eric, lakini uyu mzee na kitambi atawezana. Itabidi anawezana. If not, all his country's oil wealth will fall into the hands of the Chinese. Angola owes China a whooping $25 billion, Ty. Hey, hey, okay, now, okay, who else is playing these dangerous games? Wachezaji ni wengi. We have none other than our neighbor and friend, player 251, Abe, good guy turned bad Ahmed of Ethiopia. <laughs> Whose country actually owes a whooping $63.85 billion, Ty? This guy's presence in this game has surprised so many people. At one point, he even won a Nobel Peace Prize. Now, he has an ongoing war with the Tigray region of Ethiopia that is proving very costly, both in terms of lives and money. He is dropping both bombs and treasury bonds. <laughs> Ty, 13.7 of those billion dollars are actually owed to none other than China, but they have time to pay, since this country of Ethiopia are apparently still in 2014, according to their calendar. <laughs> hey, like Eric, uh, I'm happy at least we didn't make top three at this game. Ah, yeah, 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 Ty, 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 as usual, you're wrong. Hmm? We are very well represented. You know him, you love him, Mr. Sasa Munataka Afanye Nini Kamasi Kukopa, himself, player 254 Uhuru Mwigai Kenyatta. So I am telling you, with a total debt of $70.9 billion, Uhuru comes into this game as a professional in the begging game, eh? And he has what it takes to win. He has excelled at the justice system game in the ICC. He has survived a mutiny by his deputy president, eh, my friend. And finally, Ty, <laughs> he has survived the most dangerous thing of all, eating meat at Kenyatta Market and drinking keg. Bila tumbo kusumbua. <laughs> but there is a reason, Ty, this is a crowd favorite, yeah? He is not afraid to borrow some more. 
I will borrow. Okay. Good friend. Recently, recently. I will. I will continue <laughs> to borrow. He will continue to borrow. Hmm? And if I were a betting man, that is who I'd put my money on to win this game of squeeze games. Mm -hmm. Ako professional, sana, will you jama? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Dutch Ivana himself, Eric Lusavali! <laughs> Coming up next, our interview with a podcaster, stand-up comedian, MC extraordinaire, Emmanuel Kisiangani. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest tonight, our guest tonight has done so much for audiovisual. Karibu a person like this. <laughs> so, podcaster, stand up comedian, MC extraordinaire, ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Emmanuel Kisiangani. <laughs> you, you've been in radio, you've done stand up comedy in South Africa. What have you not done? And what's your entertainment journey been like? It's it's been a long one. But before we even get into that, uh -huh. greetings from my mother. Ah, <laughs> she <laughs> loves she loves this show. As she should. Yeah. She was saying, Unenda your show to me. Salamia to me. So she she loves your show. Uh -huh. She Thank actually you. prays for you in oh. London. Yeah. No wonder. You know, I've been working with some blessings in this life yeah, of mine. She does, she does, she does. Yeah. She's like, hey, Mongo Papa Saitia wey chamawa to me. Ingawache, <laughs> <laughs> she even adds her own stories in okay. the prayers. Okay. Ingawache at at the letter wey chamawa kufruta pangi. But just press this young man. <laughs> He's employing Indians, Jesus. Lazima, Lazima to wa Indi Pia wa Yeah, you're doing well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank yeah. you much, man. Entertainment journey make what? No, it's been it's been a long one, man. Yeah. Nine years. Wow. Nine years since I began. Since the first time I decided to do comedy. I watched Trevor Noah. And you were like, eh? Yeah. Yeah. I watched Trevor Noah. I was like, Kitu si mina wese. Kitu raisi. Yeah. <laughs> My plan was to do three shows, eh? Uh -huh. Wedding zote za Kenya zinge kwa zangu. Wow, wow, wow. So, like, sasa, sasa unawana umefika yu ligi sasa, Trevor Noah? Okay, nilifanya wedding moja juzi. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but 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 it's it's actually really been a long journey. Yeah. Nine years. Uh, I began at another platform. Yeah. I was there for like four years, uh -huh. and then I got out of there. Uh -huh. I went to South Africa. Uh -huh. I did some. Okay, I actually thought I know to do comedy until I went there. Yeah, and then and you I saw like... guys just doing crazy stuff. Then I came back and uh -huh. I unlearned everything that I'd learned, uh -huh. and then I just started again from zero. Wow. So you're saying when you went to South Africa, you realized Kenya? I couldn't come into Ah, no. Okay, honestly. <laughs> That's a trick question. You want me to be cancelled? Check it. Who your guest? Who are Kenyan comedians? No, no, but we do. We 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 do have our own style of comedy. Yes, yes. Yeah. But the international style, yeah. we hadn't built a lot of that yeah. at that time. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So when I came back. I hooked up with a guy called Doug Mutai, yes. who I discovered on the internet. Ah, right. Okay. Uh -huh. Then he came to Kenya. We uh -huh. met, and uh, you know we started small shows, uh -huh. you know, all over Nairobi in Tao. Yeah. Uh, we were then a lady called Mamito. I think you know her. I, I might have heard of her. <laughs> <laughs> so we started off like that. Uh -huh. There were times we used to have three people in the audience. Wow. So three comedians, three. Kilam to anakonawake. And we know these people. In the audience. <laughs> You know, three people who we know. Oh, okay. Yeah, three people we know, man. Wow. One was my ex, the other one was my current. <laughs> like, you know, but but it was tough. So it's interesting how it's grown till now. We yeah. have a thriving comedy scene. I've even seen you hosting a, a roast. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. When I scream, we're going to cast. Yeah? We have jobs. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, roast, what happens at a roast? I yeah. call it a celebration of artists, yes. but in another way. Okay. Right? Yeah. So, we have legend artists. Like, there's a time we had Nameless, uh -huh. which was so awesome. Uh -huh. So, we had Nameless there, yeah. and then I'm the host, but there are comedians who uh -huh. come on stage. Yes. And they say things about Nameless, uh -huh. which sound hurtful. Yeah. But they actually praise us. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. So, Mnalipwa Kutusi what? Tunalipwa Mbaya. All right. If you've not attended the roast, I think you should, you should actually make time to because we're doing it every week. Let's say someone is watching TV right now and they want to be like a... How, how do they get into stand-up comedy? We have open mics all over Nairobi right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you come for the open mic, yeah. you test your jokes yeah. in front of a small audience. Yeah. Sometimes it's a big audience. Yeah. And then after that, yeah. if you get good enough, yeah. you're going to start doing paid shows. Okay? But there's no way out. You have to start at the open mic before you get onto the paid shows. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, so na, na jetu, they, kuna ifu ni tumekuwa tukiona is it like uh, comedians are trying to run for office. Hmm. Walter Mongare Jalango, is it that nikupenda stage time <laughs> ama you feel they actually have policies that they can enact on us? They are not jokes. So zingine check za usanii si very consistent. Aha. Uh-huh. So no no kuingia gava check itakuwa every month. Na check. Na check. So okay there is that but anyone who decides yeah. even whoever you are in yeah. Kenya you can decide to run for president. But yeah. I think what matters is your intent. Yes. Our our politicians actually have that charm. Maybe yeah. they don't know they 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 do but oh. they do. So you're saying right? poli- we switch the comedians become politicians the politicians are going to See they already doing comedy. Oh. Just watch the news. Angalia <laughs> <laughs> news leo at 7. Okay, okay. Comedy. <laughs> Tumekuwa na issue ya fake degrees. And I don't know what are your thoughts on this. Is it that you got to do what you got to do? Ama is the degree thing too stringent? I think this degree thing is actually a godsend. Uh-huh. Right? Because uh-huh. there is so much, uh, you know, highlight in regard to the people who don't have degrees and now they're in the spotlight right now. So um, it, it has reached a place where parents can even correct their children. Uh-huh. Yeah? And because of the person who didn't have a degree who was in the uh, public eye uh, right yeah. cheke wewe unataka kufanya tikri yako unataka kuwa kama sakacha <laughs> <laughs> i think the way we were going i think you'd get a degree in matatu from kite from a hawk <laughs> cheke degree shilingi ni 1100 tikri <laughs> <laughs> like so we understand um is comedy kama niko outside Nairobi siwezi kuwa comedian no 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 in in Nairobi we've uh, we've not reached there yet yes. but we've reached a level where we have so many comedians in Nairobi yes. so right now um, i'm working with a, an organization called stand up collective we are touring the country yeah. trying to do what we did in Nairobi yes. in other towns yes. all right but yeah. on a high on a pressure cooker level yes, where yeah. we meet the comedians we train them they interact with comedians who are seasoned and experienced uh, and learn from them okay. so that will be faster than me and you Yeah. who you know we basically trained ourselves yes as you do your parting shot who do you think uh, should should pursue this is it a skill is it a talent ama you either have it or you don't have it uh, my parting shot would be uh, take it as a as a marathon and not a sprint okay. and then it's a very individual journey yeah. my journey will never be your journey yes, yes. all right yeah. your su- I'll enjoy your successes but your successes may never be mine yes. okay so just take it as your own path Okay and just follow it. I'm I'm saying many things. Eh? Ladies and gentlemen, Imanu Akisiaga. <laughs> That is it for this episode of Too Much Information. A big thank you for tuning in. Now catch us in the act again next Sunday 8:30 p.m. on NTV and anytime on our social media accounts. Now to get you through the week, I'll prescribe as usual a small dose of African wisdom. A short man even without a degree is not a boy. Good evening. Absolutely.